to ORS. They did it last year for us. It's their first time doing live TV since that occasion. They're going to be doing their first tour for over two years, which starts the 25th of April. Their new LP called The Top is out soon. It is The Cure. Dark clothes, graveyards, and loud, aggressive music. All things considered gothic. But how exactly did that happen? Join me on my journey. A deep dive into goth. Roman. Before goth, there was punk, an anti-establishment radical movement. The band Sex Pistols is marked as one of the first founders of the subculture. Dressed by the now world-renowned Vivian Westwood in her London boutique, Sex. The band's first and only album, Never Mind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols, established the angry, busy sound and feeling of the punk movement. Post-punk music is an offshoot of punk rock that embraces greater ambition in terms of harmony, melody, rhythm and lyrical content, while retaining punk and energy and urgency. Bands such as Joy Division, Echo and the Bunnymen, Public Image Limited and Susie and the Banshees are some of the most popular and influential post-punk bands. However, the band and song that is credited as one of the very first gothic rock songs is Bella Lugosi's is Dead by Bauhaus. This nine minute song is dark, creepy and beautiful. Its haunting bass line and echoing dance like drums beat is a perfect example of what a goth song should be. Many pinpoint this song as the point when the gothic subculture really began and started gaining popularity. Famous goth bands such as The Damned and The Cure claim to be influenced by Bauhaus and their music. The post-punk and gothic music genre shifted to a more industrial sound in the 90s. Bands such as Typo Negative and Nine Inch Nails are great examples of this. The shift in music created new subcultures such as grunge and new metal. Bands such as Marilyn Manson and Slipknot made music that is often closer compared to their punk roots with the aggressive lyrics and fast pace. However, the gothic and post-punk influences are very clear to see. The music only continued to grow, evolve and split into other subcultures. History continued. With the early 2000s came indie Britpop, emo and a new era of grunge. 2010s saw the rise of pop punk with bands such as My Chemical Romance and Paramore. And in the present day, we are left with a huge range of alternative music. The label Alternative or Alt has become quite popular and works as a good umbrella term whilst not confining any genres. Across all these different musical subcultures, there have been accompanying fashion trends. Though post-punks and new romantics had an experimental and flamboyantly dark sense of dressing, whilst new metal fashion is influenced by industrial and techno styles. Trad goth, the fashion sense that is associated with 80s bands such as The Cure or Susie and the Banshees, is vampiric and dark in nature. I've decided to talk to one of my friends and fellow fans of gothic subcultures to have an insight into what goth means to them. Would you consider yourself gothic or alternative? Yeah, I'd consider myself part of the punk and uh, grunge subcultures. What does the punk and grunge subcultures mean to you? Punk is very heavily buried in anarchist themes and like it's very political subculture rather than just the like aesthetic sides that most people see. Do you know any gothic or alternative bands? Personally, I'm not very far in the music subculture, but I do know of some gothic bands like The Cure or emo bands like Panic at the Disco or My Chemical Romance. What kind of sound does this kind of music have? It depends on the subculture because like, they're all quite loud, I'd say, very like powerful. Um, but things like punk are more focused on the lyrics of the song rather than the, act the overall sound of it, whereas um, more gothic bands would be it sounds like more melodic rather than focusing on the lyrics of it. What kind of clothes would you say that these subcultures typically wear? Well, things like punk is very much like this jacket that I've got on with loads of pins and badges sewn on. Um, quite like home homemade, I'd say, and DIY. And grunge is like quite ripped clothes and like um, it. The subculture started with like um, mainly kids who like couldn't afford to keep up with all the new clothes so like very ripped and like well-worn clothes are quite a big part of it um kind of like skater boy style gothic clothes are very very intricate designs and there's loads um picture like vampires um that's that's very typically what like a goth person would wear <laughs>
and like very intricate old-fashioned like Victorian era is quite commonly used in it and like fishnets and lace things like that and very black most of the gothic and alternative things are very black that's all from me say spooky